So here we are with our $50 XR100R. Now, the first thing you want to do before you get anywhere with a project like this is you want to make sure that it'll run. Basically, if this engine won't run, then <clears throat> this really isn't worth anything. You might as well just throw it in a dumpster. Now, to run, an engine needs four things. It needs fuel, air, compression, and spark. Now, some people will, instead of saying compression, will say timing. But in these single, single, single cylinder uh, motorcycle engines, generally if the timing is screwed, the engine is interference and it's popped a, or it's a, popped a piston or popped a valve and you're done anyway. So really what we're interested in is see is if it has any compression. So and the easiest way to test all those things at the same time is this. This is a starter fluid, a can of ether. Basically we're going to spray a little bit of starter fluid into the intake and if the engine fires up then we automatically know we have air spark and compression which just leaves fuel which is usually the common cause of uh, one of these older bikes not running so what we're going to do is we're going to pop the throttle all the way open we're going to spray a little bit into the air cleaner make sure it's in neutral fires right up which tells us that the engine itself is pretty healthy and so now what we can do is we can get into it and figure out why it's not getting any fuel okay <clears throat> so here's our carburetor um, that I took off of the bike and it looks pretty pretty dirty but old dirty so I don't see anything too dramatic from the outside so we're just gonna take it off and it looks like somebody's already done us a favor and stripped out some of these holes so we're going to take this all apart and we're going to clean it um, and hopefully then we should be able to throw it back in the bike, fill it with gas and she'll fire right up. So there's our problem right there. It's full of this crystallized garbage. I don't, I don't really know what this stuff is. Maybe it's just dirt. Um, but either way, we're going to give this thing a good cleaning and reassemble it. Everything in here looks solid other than being just grody. The other thing I always recommend is when you take apart a carburetor, write down the size of the main jet, the idler jet, and the amount of screws turned in on the fuel screw, uh, and compare it against a factory uh, manual, or if you don't have that handy, it just gives you a reference point, so later on when you're looking at it, uh, and if you're having fueling issues, you can uh, compare and contrast on and take the carburetor back off just to get that information. Well, <clears throat> good news and bad news. Good news is that we got the car back on and everything seems to be working properly. Bad news is, is the bike coughed a few times and once it heated up, it wouldn't do basically any, any revs. It just doesn't really want to start now. I put a compression tester on it and uh, she clocked in at like 50 pounds. And a bike like this should normally see about 120 PSI. So <clears throat> the top end on this thing is Dunskeed. But the nice thing about buying a bike for 50 bucks is that, you know, I have a lot of budget to play with without, you know, kind of putting myself in a bad position. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually uh, take off the head and take a look inside uh, and figure out what size our piston is. Uh, stock is about 53 millimeter, but I can't seem to find stock replacement pistons. So we might slap on a, a big bore kit, <clears throat> depending on money. So for now, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take the exhaust, the intake off, and then pull the head apart itself. First thing we did was we took off the uh, the intake right there, pulled out the spark plug, took off the exhaust, held on by header bolts here, bolt here, and bolt here. There's the exhaust on the ground just chilling. <clears throat> Next we gotta do is we gotta take off this valve cover. It's gonna be two 10 millimeter uh, bolts. We can pull this thing off. Well, <clears throat> took the cover off, drained the oil. There's definitely some, uh, I don't know if that's clutch material or just metal or what in the oil so that's not super good but uh, next thing that's going to come off is the valve train then once the valve train is off we can pull the head off entirely okay so now that we have everything apart we may have gotten lucky um, because this piston is in really good shape I mean I can't have very many hours on it only had a little bit of gunk in it um, there's a little side to side play which is normal but there's no up and down play which means the bearing is good the crank spins nicely all of the rings appear to be in good shape it's stamped KN4. I don't know what that is. I'll have to Google that. Um, what do we have? We have NDA high output. 
on one side and 436A4 on the other side. I'm not sure <clears throat> about manufacturer. Looks to be just a standard stock cast piston though. If we come over uh, here, take a look at the jug. These gaskets were in really bad shape. This one was obviously damaged before I even pulled it off. And we may have gotten lucky and our compression leak was just gaskets and uh, these stretch bolts. I don't know if they're, they need to be replaced or not, but we may order new ones. <clears throat> I honed out the bore. The bore looks immaculate. I mean, there's just a few small striations. Nothing, nothing too serious at all. So we can set all of this aside. And now the real question is this guy. This is our head. And while it looks a little crusty, it's not, nothing here is telling me that I'm going to have a leak. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the head apart and clean the valves and lap the valve seats and uh, put everything back together and hopefully it should uh, be fine. We'll get some new gaskets, some new bolts, not a big deal, and uh, be on our way. Well, <clears throat> here we go. Here's our clean head. And one of the things I found was this one didn't have a valve guide at all. Um, and this one had a pretty badly cracked and damaged valve guide. <clears throat> now that combined with an incredibly heavy amount of, of um, oxidation on the valves, I imagine most of the leaking was coming through here, through these valve seats. Now, once they're cleaned up, the valve seats themselves actually look pretty good. If you can see right in there, they're all really smooth. There's no obvious nicks. Or damage I've cleaned up the valves themselves they feel straight and true and the valve seats polished up on the valves as well without too much of an issue so now all we really have to do is order new gaskets uh, new valves and probably new stretch bolts because I imagine these are not reusable um, and in addition to that I just need to clean up some of the stuff a little bit <clears throat> but other than that, we should be able to order some parts and get this bike back together without too much trouble. Alright, <clears throat> so we installed the base gasket, put the jug on, installed the head gasket, put the head on, um, installed our new studs, torqued these down to uh, about 15 foot-pounds. I did another 30, 40 degrees past that. We installed the cam. You want the cam lobes facing down. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to catch that or not. Basically, you want this to be pretty flat, um, something like that. And now, oops, it's hard to do like that. Now we're gonna install um, this guy. Uh, this is the cam sprocket, you can see it's pretty worn. Um, we're gonna set this to top dead center down here. Where is it? This is pretty rusty right there. That mark right there is top dead center. So we're just gonna leave it right there. That's top dead center. And this right here is top dead center. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this guy basically like that using the two screws that came with it, a uh, little 10 millimeters I got laying around here somewhere. Um, and after that, we should be able to just finish putting this thing together and fire her up. A little catch up. Basically, our engine's reassembled. Got the valve cover on, got the exhaust on, got the carb on, got it to come up, pop over a few times. Um, ran a new clutch cable to replace the one that was trashed. Um, front brake cable we've put on this new uh, new mount but I got to get this figured out but first I'll basically want to get this thing to run properly um, so I'm gonna set up a little a little squeeze bottle of gas we'll see if we can get it to work properly okay so we got everything back together um, in the end it turned out that the part of the problem this thing was running so shitty was the valve lash was all over the place put the valve lash back right and made sure that the carb was actually filling up with gasoline because um, it wasn't uh, as a stuck float did all that bike seems to kick off right away so last thing we got to address is these brakes um, that don't really work very well so I got new pads or uh, new shoes rather but uh, we got to take this whole assembly apart to figure out why this is sticking and I got a new cable for this guy as well so I already did the front uh, this is the back unfortunately the tube in the back is trash so we're gonna be taking this wheel on and off again uh, a couple of times to go and get the tube replaced but as far as the brakes are concerned, basically once you take it off, this whole thing just pops right off. And as you can see, it's really basic uh, design. You flex these apart, pull it off, put the new ones on just like that. Everything slides right back together.
Well, there's our bike. I know the rear tire is super flat, but um, it's always fun when you pull something like this out of a field for 50 bucks and make it work. Looks like we have maybe a little bit of a float bowl leak in there. Nothing too bad, but it's pretty cool that we got this thing up and running again. Um, you know, it's, it's never going to be anything super duper special, but you know, it always kind of warms my heart whenever you can save something mechanical from just being scrapped or, you know, returning to the earth. Um, and I spent probably 120 bucks, 130 bucks, including all the head gaskets and stuff from Ron Ayers, um, which isn't too, too bad to get this thing back up and running. So let me see if she'll uh, cooperate. I'll fire up for you guys and you can see the uh, smoke show that this bike is. There you go, she runs and drives. A little squirrely with the rear wheel not being inflated at all, but you know, it works. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Max, this is Max Works. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Snapchat. Uh, as always, see all the latest stuff. Uh, and that's all I got for you guys. Peace.